Welcome back, Faith Warriors. Welcome, welcome back. I am Faith Warrior Broderick. What the ultimate goal is to inspire you, to build a better you, to help you discover your God given potential, to bring it out of you, to encourage you to repent and turn from all of your sins, and to abide in Jesus Christ so that you can win and be all that He wants you to be, to empower each other, to enhance each other's lives by desiring a sincere milk of the word so that you can grow thereby building upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ, his awesome self, being a chief cornerstone. Let's continue to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold onto eternal life. Now, we are going into part two of works of the flesh, which is found in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, 19 to the 21st verse. The apostle Paul wrote a letter to the churches in Galatia, okay? And letting them know that if you do these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you do these sins and you do not repent of these sins or turn from these sins and you die while you are in these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You either got Jesus. That's the question. You see that on the shirt? Got Jesus. It's hell without him. So if you are living a life of, if you are living in a in a life of sin and willful rebellion against God, you don't have Jesus. Now is the time for you to try Jesus. It is time for you to turn from those sins because Jesus Christ came and paid the price for you. He came and paid your sin debt so that you don't have to be bound to those sins no more. Now is the time to open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. God forgiveth all of your sins. He can even give you all of your iniquities. It's time for you to turn to him. Let's go back into the book of Galatians and see what God do not want us to do. A lot of people complain because they say, oh, here we go again. One of these guys is telling you what you can't do. It's the Bible that's saying that we can't do. I'm just a messenger. It is the Bible telling us what we can't do. Apostle Paul was saying this to the early Christians in his time. And I'm saying this to those that are listening right now. We can't live in rebellion against God and think that we are all right because we're not. This is not one of those channels where it's going, I'm going to sugarcoat the word of God and say that it's okay if you do these things. Because it's not okay if you turn your back and live in rebellion against God. It is just not okay. God wants you to be saved. The Bible says the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodly lusts. That we shall live soberly and righteously in this present time. So the grace of God, everybody always talking about the grace of God, right? But the grace of God, according to the Bible, teaches us to deny ungodly lust. It teaches us to, to, to deny the things that you're about to learn today. That's what the grace of God teaches. Go to the book of Titus. It'll tell you that. It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. That's the true grace message of the Bible. Not this fake stuff that you're hearing in these churches in today's time. The grace of the Bible teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And it also tells us to live righteously in this present evil world. I'm going to grab my Bible. Okay? Now, let's pick back up where we left off at from last week. Okay? He said, now the works, are the, are, the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Now, we, we ended off with hatred. That's what we ended off with. Now, last week I was breaking it down in the Greek, and I'm going to continue it on this week also. But we're going to pick it up right back right there with um, with hatred, okay? So hatred, once again, the Greek word is ekethra, which means enmity, hatred, bitter dislike, abhorrence, malice, and ill will against anyone. Tendencies to hold grudges against to be angry at someone. Let me tell you something. Racism is also a form of hatred. If you can't stand the other color, you can't stand the Caucasian, you can't stand the African American, the Filipino, the Pacific Islander, the Hawaiian, the Japanese or the Chinese or whoever. If you if you hate them every time you see them, you can't stand and look at them. You have hatred in your heart and you are in rebellion against God. You have to love everybody. 
You can't have that ill will every time you see somebody of a different color. That's that's sin. That's transgression. That's respect the person, which in the book of James says, if you are a respected person, you committed sin. Okay? You have to love everybody. You don't have to agree with everything that they say or do, but you have to love them. You cannot hate them. Have an ill will. That's what hatred is. Have an ill will, malice against someone. All right, you holding grudges on things that happened back in the old days. Okay, it's time for us to forgive and it's time for us to love. It's time for us to be the better person. And if somebody mistreats you, don't throw that back at them. It's time for you to be the better, be the bigger person and be humble. Have that same like that mindset that Christ Jesus had. The Bible said when he was reviled, meaning when he was threatened, he threatened not again. He didn't lash back out at them with the same attitude they did, right? The Bible says, but he committed himself unto God. He was faithful unto God. He only and he and he spoke God's word. We have to be like Jesus. Don't have hatred. Have love. That don't mean that you um by okay, okay, so by so when I say hatred, you don't have that hatred. To be like, man, I can't stand you. Get on my every time I see you, I wanna I just wanna punch you. That's wrong. That's wrong. We have to love them. We don't have to like what they're doing. We don't have to like how they act, but we do have to love. We cannot hate. Okay? Next one. Variance. Greek word for variance is eris, which means decisions. So in discord, quarrelings. Evil debating and evil disputes. Okay, so when you are crawling and arguing and going back and forth and just having people start cussing, they start doing all these different things, so in discord, causing problems, you know, it's okay to debate if the if the atmosphere is of love. Once again, it's okay. See, it's a righteous way to debate and it's a sinful way to debate. The righteous way to debate is this. Y'all come together and you sit down and you talk it out with love, right? But the evil way is that y'all at each other's necks and y'all ready to punch each other and then go to blows. That is transgression. That is variance. Don't commit variance. Which means, once again, the soul discord, quarreling, okay? Or to evil disputing. Y'all disputing against each other, but y'all doing it to the point where now y'all just at each other's throats. Don't do that. If you do, repent, ask God to forgive you and turn from it and ask God to strengthen you. So if those situations come up in your life again, you'll have power to be able to overcome them. Okay? Walk to the flesh number nine. Emulations. Greek word. Zeloi. And forgive me if I'm not pronouncing these words right. Okay? Forgive me if I'm not pronouncing the words right. But emulations, the Greek word is zeloi, which means envies. Jealousy, striving to ex striving to excel at the expense of another, seeking to surpass and outdo others because you are jealous of them. So what that means is this: you emulating somebody, you want to be you want to be like somebody because you are jealous at what they got, so you want to try to get to what they at. You want to try to get to where they are because you're jealous at where they are. In other words, have you ever heard the term "keeping up with the Joneses"? Well, that's what that is. You see what they got. And you want to emulate that because you have that, you jealous of what they got and you want to try to get what they got. So now you're trying to be like them. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. See, there's a good way to emulate and there's a bad way to emulate. We trying to emulate Christ, right? Those that follow Jesus Christ, we want to emulate Christ. We want to be just like Christ. That's emulation, but that's in a good way. The evil way is to do it because you want to be better than them. You want to be better than them because you have the evil, jealous tendencies because you're like, man, they got that. Man, I got to try to get that too, man. Man, I got to try to get that. You want to emulate that. You want to do everything they want to do because you're jealous that they got it. That's emulations, okay? Work of the flesh number 10, okay? It's wrath, Greek word, thumos, which means indignation and fierceness, turbulent passion, Domestic and civil turmoils raise determined, lasting anger. So domestic violence, you know, 
you know, ready to go and fight and kick somebody butt. You know, you go call your friends and stuff like that. They go and try to go get on this dude or go get on that girl. Y'all go go and punch and y'all gonna do all this stuff. You angry, you just mad, you just mad and nobody, you don't care what nobody say. Right? That's not right. You cannot have wrath in your heart like that. Leaving anger unchecked is like you putting some water in the pot and putting it on the stove and cut the fire on. If that fire stay on that water for so long, it's going to start boiling, right? Okay, well, listen, that anger that you have, it can turn to wrath. Look, the Bible said be angry and sin not. Look, anger in itself is not sin. It's the misuse of anger that will cause you to commit sin. That's why I say put off anger because anger that lasts too long will, 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 will produce wrath. We can't have wrath. We have to be humble. Humble people of God. If you get angry and if you commit the sin of wrath, repent. Humble yourself. God is one. Listen, listen, listen. God want to help you in your situation. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to put you on blast. I'm just want to let you know what God's words say. If you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Your salvation, your salvation and your spiritual condition, it's up to you. What do I mean by that is this. Look, God ain't going to force you to be saved. You got to want him. If you confess your sins, the Bible said God will be faithful and forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from righteousness. But you have to confess. If you confess, God will do the rest. He will give you the power to overcome. He will give you the power to stand. But if you got that attitude, I'm okay, this is who I am, you will never be able to change. Change happens when you want to change. Change is difficult. But if you change for the better, if you change for the better, you will become better. But you got to want to change. Works of the flesh, number 11. Strife. Greek word is erethia, which means contentions, strife about words, angry contentions, um, trying to pay back people. So you striving, you striving out do, you have strife in your heart, contentions, contending, doing things to try to be better than somebody. Who do you think you are? Come on, people. Let us love one another. Let us care and have compassion for one another. Let us tell them the truth. Don't strive. Don't have strife in your heart. Okay? Don't do it. Please, don't have strife in your heart. Don't try to outdo one another. Don't. Why? If you read the book of Acts, the early Christians, you will see how they was. It said they always helped one another. They had all things in common. They weren't trying to outdo one another. We need to have that same attitude. If you see God bless your brother, be happy about that. Don't strive to outdo him. Don't have strife in your heart. Evil contentions. Don't have that in your heart. If you do, ask God to forgive you. He have, he, God is full of mercy. He's ready to forgive you. But you gotta be, you gotta be of a humble mind and be willing to confess and turn away from your sin. Works of the flesh, number 12. Seditions, which in the Greek means dikosatia, dikosatia, which means causing divisions, having parties, having certain cliques, popular disorder, popular disorder Stirring up strife in religion, government, and home. So you got seditions, people that's trying to cause trauma. You got they got they certain little parties who they hang with, and they try to cause trouble in government, in churches, or even in your homes. That's called sedition, trying to cause uproars, trying to cause problems, creating drama. Especially 
for those that say they follow Jesus. Why do we commit the sin of sedition? Why? We don't have to do these things. Once again, if you do, ask God to forgive you. I ain't been innocent of these things. I committed wrath before. Oh, yeah. Got angry many times, right? But I had to turn from that and ask God to forgive me and to give me a spirit of humbleness. God will help you if you want to get help. If you seek him, he will come unto you. But when you seek him, you got to believe and have faith and have a humble heart. God is ready. If you don't got Jesus, now is the time for you to get Jesus in your life. Heresy is the next one. Heresies is the next one. Heresy, heresy, heresy. We hear all type of heresies all in the world. One of them that is dominated in the churches today is the once saved, always saved doctrine. That is a damnable heresy. It is not true. That is nowhere in the Bible. They take certain passages and certain scriptures and they run with it. They love to use the one in the book of St. John, the 10th chapter, right? And they always start at the one when it's talking about nobody can snatch them out of their hand, out of God's hand. But they never start up in the beginning of the chapter when it's talking about those, and when Jesus says, those that hear my voice, they follow me. If you follow in Jesus, nobody can snatch you out of God's hand. But if you voluntarily leave God's word because you want to go back into the world and commit transgression, that's on you. And you will die in your sins and you will go to hell. I'm not afraid to say that you will go to hell because the Bible said it. Paul said you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Go to the book of Revelations. I believe it was the 20th chapter, the 21st verse. God himself said if you do these sins, you will be thrown into the lake which burning with fire. Don't believe in these damnable heresies. Don't believe in them. Heresies are dangerous. The next one, works of the flesh, number 14, envyings. And the Greek word is pentanoi. Hopefully I said that right. Pentanoi, which means pain ill will and jealousy at the good fortune or blessing of another. You see that? Somebody get blessed, you have a problem with it. You get jealous. Once again, it's pain. You, you feel pain by that. that. That hurts you that somebody just got blessed with a house. That hurts you that somebody got blessed with their career. That hurts you. It just hurts you so bad. And now you're just so angry because you said, why them? It should have been me. Instead, you should be congratulating them because God opened up a door for them that was otherwise shut without him. But you're getting jealous. That is a work of the flesh and you must repent and turn from that sin. If you commit envyings, turn from your sins. Repent and believe on Jesus and follow him. Ask him to help you when those urges come up. Listen, before a person commits a sin, Satan presents it to him in the form of a temptation. And when you are tempted to it, then when you entice that temptation, when you are allowing it, to conceive in your mind, the Bible said it brings forth sin. And then when sin, it is finished, it brings forth spiritual death. Don't be envious. Be a congratulator. But let it be a genuine congratulations. Not one of a cliche. Oh, congratulations, but you don't really mean it. Let your heart really be congratulatory towards your, your, your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You want them to celebrate. You want, you want them to be happy for you when you get blessed, right? Well, be happy for them when they get blessed. Works of the flesh, number 15. Murderous. Greek word, phanoi, meaning to kill. We do not kill. We do not murder. That is a sin against God. You cannot murder anybody. I don't even got to go in detail on that one because we all know what murder is. You can't murder. That's a sin against God. You need to repent and turn from that sin. God will forgive you. The people won't forget. 
They won't forget. But God, you will be in good standing with God if you ask God to forgive you and you have a change of our nature and a change of our lifestyle and you walk and live according to Jesus. God will keep you saved and he will save you in the end if you hold on. Though you were once a murderer, God will come and set you free. You don't have to be bound to any sin. Works of the flesh, 16. Drunkenness, Greek word is matai, which means living in living intoxicated. You are a slave to drink and you got and drinking bouts. We don't drink beer, we don't get drunk, we don't get drunk out of our mind, we don't drink the, the Hennessy, we don't drink the Owl Say, we don't drink the Colt 45, we don't drink the Budweiser, we don't get drunk and then still say that we are saved. That is a lie. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He that soar to the flesh and of the flesh reap corruption. He that soar to the spirit and of the spirit reap everlasting life. You think God is deceived? He ain't deceived. There is no drunkards in heaven. There is no fornicators in heaven. There is no murderers in heaven. I'm sorry. You can't get drunk and say that you are of God. You need to repent. No drinking in a life of Christ. If you're living for God, you cannot be drinking, having secret stashes in your refrigerator, having secret status in your cabinet. What's going on here? you drinking beverages that have like 50% of alcohol in there. You know it's going to make you tipsy. And yet you're still drinking. And you think because you have a relationship, you have a relationship with God, you think you're bad. You're not bad. God is not mocked. He sees what you are doing. You can't get drunk, man. You can't get drunk, girl, woman. You can't get drunk. That is not the way of God. That is the way of this world. And the world pass away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. We have to stand on sin and stand up for God. Works of the flesh, number 17. Revelings, which means kamoi, lasciviousness, lascivious and boisterous feasting. With obscene music. We don't go party at the clubs. We don't go shaking what our mama gave us and let a stranger come and touch her. We don't dance at the clubs. We don't dance to this crazy old music that is out there. I'm sorry. This is going to offend a lot of people because a lot of people like to go to these old crazy old concerts. They like to go to all this worldly stuff, right? And they they worship and they they so excited. They sing and all this um, provocative music, obscene, inappropriate music. They listen to all this stuff, right? They go to these clubs, they go to these um, um, parties, house parties, and all these different types of things, right? And they think that it is okay. This is the things of the world. If you are a believer, you cannot do these things. That's called revelings. Another word for it is debauchery. You don't go and revel in that mess. I used to do it. I used to love the party. That was my life before I gave my life to Christ. I used to be a party guy. I used to love to go and party. Anybody that knows me know that. I used to love and go and party and get my thing on. That was what I did. But I was wrong when I did it. God had to come and save me and deliver me from that. And he can do the same thing for you. Stop saying it's too hard for you to give it up. Trust in Jesus and give him a try. He can help you get rid of your sins. Give it over to him. He will clean you up and make you right. And Paul said, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't say it. The Apostle Paul said it. If you do these things and you die in these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That concludes the works of the flesh. Next time we're going to talk about the fruit of the spirit. We're going to talk about the fruit of the spirit next time. I just want y'all to know, man, that God loves y'all. He wants y'all to turn from y'all sins. 
please turn from your sins. Stop saying that you are okay in what you are doing. Stop saying that you're okay. Because if you are living in the sin, you are not okay. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to lead you to Jesus. I want you to get Jesus. So it will be, because with Jesus, it's heaven. Without him, it's hell. That's just the simple fact. Now is the time to open up your life unto Jesus Christ. Wherever you are listening to this right now, if you are struggling with fornication, if you are struggling with adultery, uncleanness, homosexuality, if you have uh, hatred in your heart, if you are racist, right? If you have envious, if you are a person that drinks a lot of beers, especially on the weekend, it's about to be Memorial Day. Maybe you're going to get with your friends. You should be social distancing. But anyway, maybe you're going to get with your friends and maybe you're going to start go throw some back as they say in things. You're going to throw some back. Well, how about not throwing it back and say, God, help me to throw it away. How about saying, God, help me to go straight? How about saying, God, help me not to be a racist? How about saying, God, give me the courage to ask my fiance, I mean, ask my girlfriend to marry me or to ask your boyfriend to marry me so that you can avoid fornication? How about that? <laughs> How about doing those things? How about giving Jesus a try? You want to try everything else? Give Jesus a try. Get Jesus into your life. He's ready. He is the open door. He's knocking. Let him come in so he can come and make his abode with you. Don't ignore the knock. Open it up. Try Jesus. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's scrumptious. Until next time, faith warriors, continue to reach higher and strive every single day to build a better you. And remember, Jesus is Lord, whether you believe it or not. Faith Warrior Project, checking out with you. I love each and every one of y'all. Have a great and safe Memorial Day weekend. Bye-bye, everybody. Lay off. Bye.